Hey, it's Rick McKay, Red Seal RV Tech for Voyager RV. And we're standing today on this beautiful sunny Okanagan day in our orientation delivery area. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on one aspect of my job, which is to provide you, the customer, with a full orientation of your unit upon uh, delivery. If you miss or forget any details of, of your orientation, don't worry, we've got you covered. This orientation is going to be on a very popular Jayco Rocky Mountain Edition J-Flight. It, it's going to be specific to this trailer, but most of the points are going to apply to any uh, RV. There's a, going to be a lot of information, but we're going to provide you with a list and a timestamp so that you can, you can buzz ahead to the, to the stuff that you're interested in seeing. The tongue jack controls the front to back angle of, of the trailer and it also helps you to position the hitch onto the ball when it, when it comes time for hookup. So there are two controls here. This one is just for a light to help you hook up in the dark. That's all it does. And this is up and down for the jack itself. Now, if you go too far and you're past the, extend past the end of the range of, of, the, uh, of, the, of the throw, you're going to cause this fuse to blow. So this is just a 30 amp blade fuse. You should carry a spare if you have one if you um, if you have one of these jacks. Now what happens if you're out in the bush and and that blows and you don't have a spare? You have the option of a manual crank which is right here. We'll just pop this cap and I'm gonna go grab the the jack handle. Pause. Here's the jack handle. It just goes in like that and you can crank it up and down. Next thing I want to show you is the uh, propane cover. You'll notice that the hinges are towards the front and that's on purpose because if this is loose and you have it the other way, this can blow right off. This way it blows shut. And now we'll show you the tanks themselves. Okay, so when you get to where you're going, you're going to turn on both tanks. You have a semi-automatic changeover regulator here. So the reason is uh, the, the automatic part is uh, we're going to open both tanks. Right now, this is the tank selected and it's going to uh, draw from this tank until it's empty. I'm going to just leave it like this for right now so that I can demonstrate what's going to happen. So if the tank is, is um, selected and it's red like that and this is open, then you know that this tank is empty and it's pulling from here. The semi-automatic part is now you're going to select the other tank and you'll see it's gone to green. So we know that this tank is full. Now we can take this tank off and get it filled. In this case, both tanks are full because uh, this is ready to go. So I'm going to open up both tanks. Now this is the one that's selected first. Now we're going to talk a little bit about battery maintenance. So here's our, our RV27 battery. I'm just going to open up the, uh, the strap here so that I can get into the box. There's our RV27 battery. Now this unit has a slide so that's why we have the bigger battery on it. This particular battery is maintenance free. There's nothing to check. The only maintenance you have to worry about is in the winter time, you're going to remove this battery from the, from the coach and put it someplace warm. It's only water that's in here and it will freeze and expand and crack the case. So that's what we're trying to avoid. If by some chance you hook the battery up incorrectly, red is positive, black is, is negative, uh, then um, you're going to blow the fuse and I'll show you where that is. So if you follow the red lead, which is the positive lead, you're going to come down to this part of the, uh, of the uh, frame and you'll see this little fuse holder. So again, it's a 30 amp blade fuse. So it's another good reason to carry a, a spare. Not all trailers have this fuse. Some have resettable breakers. This one has the fuse. A resettable breaker is like this one up here. I, I don't know if you can see it from that angle, but there is a resettable breaker up there. They just heat up, cool off, and, and close the circuit again. We've moved around the trailer now. We're on the driver's side uh, and at the front of the coach, and that's where you're going to find all this trailer information here. You have your VIN, you have tra uh, tires, we have 
carrying capacities, the EVWR, all of that stuff is on these, these decals here. This decal is the decal that we put on to certify that the gas system is safe. So we have done a complete gas test on this and made sure that everything is safe and working properly as far as the gas is concerned. We do that with new units and used units. We have to do it with used units, but we do it with, with new ones as well. The other thing I want to show you up here is the stabilizer jacks. There's one on all four corners. They're only to take what I call the wiggle out of the jiggle. So if, when you're walking around, it takes, takes that little movement out of the trailer. So the way that you use that is you're going to grab a jack handle, stick it on there, and just crank them down. The closer that that, that foot is to the frame, the stronger the jack is. The more extended it is, the weaker it gets. So um, be very careful that you don't try to use this to um, level the unit. Leveling is done by um, putting something under the tire and driving up on it. And that'll get your side to side uh, uh, level taken care of. Front to back is done with the tongue jack that we just went over. Moving right along, we're going to be talking a little bit about slide maintenance next. So there's two things that you have to uh, look at uh, for slide maintenance and they're going to be done at the same time. In the fall when you put it away and in the spring when you take it out. First is this D-seal. This is what seals the outside from the inside when the, when the uh, slide comes in. So this has to be kept soft and supple. You're going to be wanting to put some slide seal saver on, on this. It just sprays out as a white foam and then it absorbs directly into the into the rubber and keeps it nice and soft and pliable. The other thing that you're, you're going to be watching for is underneath on the gears. So this is the rack for the gear system. So uh, the, this, these little teeth right here are what you're going to lube. You want to get a, a, a lube that's dry and doesn't attract dirt. Uh, we sell it in our parts store. You just spray it on here and then when you run the slide in, it lubes the gears for you. So again, you're going to be doing that in the fall and in the spring, just to keep the gears maintained. We're at the back of the trailer now, and we're getting down to the guts and the glory, where the sewage and grey water comes out, and that is down at this point here. First though, I want to talk about these two connections right here. You'll notice how these two connections look exactly the same, however, they have completely different functions. This is your uh, black tank sewer flush. This is your city water connection. Don't get them confused. For more information on this, refer to the uh, video I did called Black Tank 101, and it'll go into great detail about what, what the problems are with, uh, with confusing these two hookups. Okay, here's your sewer connection. By taking this cap off, you're gonna hook your your sewer pipe up here and then it goes down into the ground. You have your black holding tank over here. It's clearly marked with this label up here and you're going to pull that out and let the let the uh, sewage run out until it stops running then you're going to close that off. Then you're going to open the gray valve and, and let the dirty soapy water in your in your gray tank clean out your sewer hose. Once that's done you can close that up and open this up again and then use your sewer flush to just flush out your uh, black tank. Once that's done and everything stopped, stopped running, then close this up and then you're going to go inside and charge your toilet with more chemical. In the far back corner of the trailer we have this ca cable and TV uh, cable TV satellite input and it's just you just plug in here when you're at a full service park that has a cable hookup. Here at the back of the trailer is where you're going to find your electrical connection. So we'll just open up the hatch. This is a 30 amp cord, so that's just going to plug into the post. Just pulls out of the trailer. It's uh, this, I think this one's about 25 feet long. They're usually between 20 and 30 feet long. Uh, you can get a connector that will go from 30 amps to 15 to allow you to plug into your house. Uh, that way you can cool off your uh, fridge and also recharge your battery before you go camping. So it's a good idea to do that a day or two in advance. 
We have a bumper bracket for the barbecue. So first thing we have to do is hook up the, the, uh, the barbecue hose. So we're going to remove the cap, make sure that this is turned off, and it is. And just pop this in here, like that. Then we can turn on the, the propane. So to open up this bracket, we just take the pin out, open this up. The barbecue will just sit, sit on these two pegs. And we hook up the barbecue. Same way as we hooked up the other one with a quick connect. Pop it open, turn on the flow of gas and light it underneath there and you have steak du jour. Ladder here is perfectly acceptable to take uh, any person's weight. Uh, you're gonna have to get up onto the roof twice a year and do a roof inspection. Now I have done a, a, a video on roof inspections to, to show you exactly what you're looking for, but you do have to do it twice a year. Once in the fall when you put it away, once in the spring when you take it out. Now we're at the rear of the uh, trailer on the passenger side, and that is where the hot water tank is located on this particular unit. So inside of the unit, so here's the outer face of the hot water tank. This is the P&T valve, the pressure temperature relief valve. So I just wanna toggle it a little bit just to make sure that there's water in the tank. If there's water up here, the tank has to be full. The only way to get water out of the tank now is to remove this plug and, and let it drain. So this one is gas and electric. Here's the gas controls. The electric controls, the, the element is on the back of the tank. And you can't see it from, from this side. This is an Atwood. So uh, this, it's just a plug in here. There's no anode rod that's on a suburban tank. So there's two different, there's two main different types of tanks, suburban and Atwood. Suburban is the one that has the anode rod. So what is an anode rod? An anode rod is, uh, is a, a, a a rod that inserts into the tank and the purpose of it is to attract the salts and minerals that's in the water to attack the rod rather than the lining of the tank. A suburban uh, hot water heater has a metal liner so we didn't have the anode rod in there the, the metal liner itself could rot out with rust or, or whatever. On a Atwood tank like this one here, the, uh, the liner is either fiberglass or glass lined. So there's no reason for, or there's no need for an anode rod because the, uh, there's nothing for the minerals and salts to attack. That's the difference. This is the uh, outside vent cover or outside vent cover of your fridge. So I'm just gonna open it up by twisting these vertically and then this just pops out and there's the back of your fridge. Okay so the back of your fridge here is really tech territory. This is your your gas control and up here is your 110 element. Your 110 element plugs in right over here. Now uh, the only real reason that I'm showing you how to take this cover off is, is, is to show about these holes. These holes allow wasps and, and other critters to come in and make little nests up in, inside here. But you can't block these off. It's important for airflow that there's no restriction whatsoever here so that the air flows freely across these cooling vin, uh, tubes. However, you're going to have to get this off every once in a while to get at the wasps. So that is that's how you take it off to put it on. You just put it into the, uh, the tabs into the notches. This comes up into here. Push these into place. Oops, let's get that straightened out. Mm -hmm. And then turn them horizontally and that locks them in place. Just like that. This is the furnace. So uh, when the furnace is running, this will get hot. You have to be careful to, to tell little kids not to touch the sh hot shiny surface because it, it does get hot enough to burn little hands. 
and it will melt plastic if you lean a, a, like a, a lawn chair or something against it. Again, the only time it's going to get hot is when you're using the furnace, but uh, it's something to be aware of. This is the range hood vent, and when uh, you get to where you're going, you're want to going to want to unlock it. Right now it's in the travel position, it's locked down. So to use this, you have to allow this little flap in here to, to, uh, to be free, and you just reach up in here. So to open this up, all you have to do is just press these little tabs, and now it's flapping free to allow the air to escape from the fan inside. This is the gravity fill uh, for your uh, fresh water tank. So to fill this, all you're going to do is uh, stick a hose in here. We're just simulating this. And then let the water run until you see water squirt out of the vent hole. This little uh, label here tells you it's potable water only uh, and, the, and that you should sanitize. I have done a video on how to sanitize your tanks. That's something else you can check out if, you, if you're interested. To get the water out of the tank, you're going to have to come down to this low point drain, which is right underneath here. This is the low point drain for the fresh water tank. All you have to do is open it up and the tank will start to drain right in my face. <laughs> if you were ever wondering what this little block is, is back here, it's actually a mount for a TV. This is the bracket. This goes onto the back of the TV and then it'll just fit on there like that. And then to get the TV off, off it comes. So there's one on the outside and there's also one in the bedroom. Uh, this is where, this is not a, a cable in, this is actually cable out for this TV. And then here's where you plug the TV in. GFI protected. To use your stairs, I'm just gonna pull this out here and then this flips down. Same thing to go up, just like that. Just be careful when you're, when you're grabbing this that you uh, don't just hang on because you can hurt your wrist if, if, if you're not careful. To use the door, the latch opens like so. There's our screen door. On the inside, this is how you open the latch from the inside once this is closed. To open the door from the inside, this is your latch. You can see that the, that the lock is, is opening and closing. And this is your deadbolt. Don't try to close the door with a deadbolt out. <laughs> and this little pole here is to, to help you close the door from the inside. This concludes our orientation video. The points I've covered in this video will apply to most RVs, but if you have a specific question relating to your RV, please leave a comment below the video. Whether you're new to the Voyager RV experience or longtime returning customer, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and that way you can get the most out of our how-to video series as we dive deeper into the details of RV maintenance. So until next time, that's it, and remember, Good maintenance leads to happy camping.